If you've ever tried to use Gutenberg and full site editing, you'll probably quickly come to realize there's still an awful lot of limitations in that software. And if you are in that position where you have to use it, well, what can you do? Well, today I'm going to give you four different free plugins that open up a ton of possibilities and make Gutenberg actually considerably more usable. Like I say, these are all totally free and links to everything will be down in the description down below. But before we go any further, if you use Gutenberg, what tools do you use to enhance it? If any, let me have your feedback down below. Anyway, let's crack on and take a look at the first one. First on our list is Blockera Site Builder. Now, the reason I'm talking about this one today is because this doesn't kind of replace what you can do inside Gutenberg. It just kind of supercharges it with a lot more options, things that you would expect to be there. Let's take a quick look at how this all works. Now, I'm not going to cover this in extensive detail. If you want something like that, let me know in the comment section down below. There is a pro version coming out at some point, and some of the things look like they're locked behind the pro paywall, but that isn't available yet. And everything I cover will only be in the free version. So once you install the plugin and activate it, come into any post page, template, whatever it is, full site editing, all those things, and you'll have access to all the extra features that are included from Blockera. So let's take a quick look. Let's select, for example, this image, and now take a look at the right hand side, and you'll see we have three tabs here, your general styles and animations. Now, if you've ever used Spectra by Brainstorm Force, this kind of tab layout is gonna look quite familiar. However, let's take a quick look through. You can see you still retain all the normal kind of Gutenberg-centric options like the variations for just the normal image or the horrible rounded corners, which nobody with any kind of design aesthetic skills will ever touch. But you can see there's an awful lot more inside you. So let's open up things like your inner blocks. This allows you to see exactly what inner blocks are being used and what you can add inside there and so on. Your spacing. Again, you've got your margins on the outside, your padding on the middle, and you can easily click inside here. You can click this little symbol and you can choose to lock various different options here. So maybe your vertical, your horizontal and so on, or lock all. And then you can input a value if you want to, or you can simply drag up and down to increase or decrease the values inside there. Same thing goes if you want to go for the outside for your margins. You can see we can add margins inside there. We can lock them. We can put negative margins and so on. Pretty cool. You'll also notice though you get this little green symbol. And this little green symbol means you can use variables. Pretty nifty. So if you open this up, you can see you've got a set of variables inside you. Custom variables are coming at some point, but again, that might be locked behind the pro paywall. I don't know. But let's say you wanted to set this up to be a specific variable. You can click. There you go. Your variable now is being used. You see this is only being used on the top margin. The bottom left and right are totally left alone. So that's pretty nifty. Your typography, again, gives you more options inside you. You can click the little option here and expand things out. But you can see by default, unlike normal WordPress and Gutenberg, all of the options are enabled by default. What a radical idea. But if you want to just sort of disable something, let's say, for example, you never use the text transform, just click, remove the little checkbox on the side of it. That will no longer be shown. It's just deactivated. I want to put it back, click, put it back in. Super easy. You can see in a nice, simple way, there's the key options you want, the font family, the appearance, size, line height, and so on. And if you want more features, again, radical idea, I know, you can click the more features option and there are, surprise, surprise, more features. Imagine if Gutenberg actually used this kind of way of working. It's not exactly difficult, but this is a nice, simple way of using it. You can click inside where you've got these pixels and you can see you can choose a lot of different options, including CSS functions and variables. So again, you can open that up and you can use the variables inside you. You can click the little star that's popping up in the corner. And again, you can see you've got the variables for small, medium and large and so on. And again, custom variables will be coming in the future. Nifty. Lots of options here, including orientation, direction, all those kinds of things you'd want to have modern typography and control over all those different aspects. Same kind of thing goes for your background. You've got your three little options. You can see most of these, if not all of them, are enabled. And if you want to disable them, you can do that from here as well. So you can see you can set up your background colors, your clipping. Open this up. There's your colors. You can use a little color picker if you want to to grab a colors on a particular image, icon, logo, whatever it is. You want to use that, you could grab it from here. Nifty. What I also like about this is if you want help on anything, you see once you hover over, for example, image and gradient, click. And that opens up the help section. Now, again, some of these things are coming soon. So videos and image slideshow and so on. So there's still features to be launched. Again, like I say, these will probably be behind that paywall. 
But there's more than enough here to help you create and build pages and sites and so on inside full site editing Gutenberg with a lot more control. Now your layout, you've also got options inside here. So you've got flex controls inside here. You can see you've got flex and grid. You can set your inline blocks, your inline, you can set it to none. You can set all your display options inside here. Your sizing is all available. Again, you see we've got the option to work with these variables and things. So content width, site-wide width, and so on. Those variables are set up inside here. You can control your overflow. You can set your position. So we've got absolute relative fixed and sticky and so on. All the things you expect. You've even got things like effects for opacity, 2D and 3D transforms and so on. Custom CSS, as you can see, is a pro feature, which is a shame, but you know, they've got to make some money somewhere. Come into animations and inside there, there's a couple of options where they're not currently available right now. And I, again, I would imagine they're going to be locked behind the pro paywall. But you can see inside styles, there's more than enough inside you to power up what you can do inside Gutenberg just using this free plugin. And like I say, this isn't limited to just pages or posts. You can use this with full site editing as well. Now, before we go any further, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Are you looking for a hosting partner that takes speed and security seriously? Then look no further than Kinsta. Their hosting not only delivers lightning fast performance and top tier security, but also provides you with powerful MyKinsta tools. These tools are designed to empower you, making it easy to manage your WordPress site with absolute confidence. And when you need help, they have a WordPress experts available 24 seven. No bots, just real answers and real support from people who understand WordPress. It's no wonder they're rated 4.8 stars on G2 with over 740 reviews from satisfied users. This high rating and positive feedback should give you the confidence to trust in their services. Kinsta, the hosting solution that's fast, secure, and always backed by real support. Get started now using the link in the description below. Okay, let's get back on with today's video. Next on our list is Core Framework and the free Gutenberg add-on, which allows you to pull in all the Core Framework options, variables, classes, and so on into Gutenberg for zero cost whatsoever. Now, you could use this slightly in conjunction with Blockera if you wanted to, or you could use it as a standalone, and it'll give you a lot more control using variables and classes and so on inside Gutenberg itself. Let me show you how this works. Now, for ease, I've disabled block era at this point in time just to keep the interface nice and clean and simple. And while some aspects of Core Framework integrate into block era, including the colors, there's not that much of an overlap there. You could use them together, but probably no need to. So once you install the Core Framework plugin and activate the Gutenberg add-on, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, select anything on your page and you'll see you now get this core framework tab and it's broken down into various different sections you've got your colors your typography your spacing and so on open any of these up and you can see inside there they're broken down into various different sections now this is the standard default setup for core framework nothing i've included here is anything changed from just installing it clean and simple if you add your own variables and classes and so on those will become available inside the editor in gutenberg for you as well but let's say fluid typography let's open this up you can see there's all our fluid typography options as we hover over you can see we get a visual representation on the page so we may want to set these to be medium there we go. We now have fluid typography inside Gutenberg itself. And you have a lot more control over it. So you can see you can set your fluid typography. You can set your line heights inside here so you can control how this looks. You've also got your text modifier so you can make things italic, bold, and so on. You can set the font weight inside here as well, all using these variables. Text alignment, that's all controlled inside you. Come into things like your spacing and you've got your gaps, your padding and your margin. So for example, let's say we want to add some padding on here. We'll say medium. Let's come in then. You can see you've got your layouts inside you. So if you're working with multiple columns, you can set up your grids and all those kinds of good things. Come into design and you can set things like your border radius, your background colors and so on. Let's set a background color on here quickly. Set a background, we'll say we'll use this, this light color. And you'll also notice that we've got a lot more colors inside you, including transparencies. These are all colors that are part of Core Framework. So we're using variables for our colors as opposed to just hard-coded colors. It's all available inside you. So let's go back. Let's go back into our design options. Let's come into our border radius. Let's set a medium border radius. Let's come into our borders. Let's say we want to put a border on here. You can see we can set all those values up inside you. If you've got images, you can set aspect ratios, image fits, backdrop blurs, and so on. Lots of really cool options inside your components if you want to use those, like custom buttons and things. 
And finally, you've also got your different utility classes. So there's a lot of options inside you to give you even more control over how everything looks and feels. So you may want to take a look at using Core Framework alongside the Gutenberg Editor. Let's just quickly save this and jump out. If we come into Core Framework, you can see there's our colors. If we expand this, you can see there's our shades, our tints. We've also got transparencies. All these are being reflected inside the Gutenberg Editor as well. So we're accessing those colors from here. So if we make changes, save the actual CSS and so on, all those will be reflected. Same thing goes for your typography. All the options are inside here. You want to change your base font value. Everything's based on the medium size to start off with. You want to change your minimum scales and so on all set up inside you. Everything you should need is set up here for you. Your components, you can see we can reference those or you create your button inside you and so on. If you come into the Gutenberg, you'll see we can enable a couple of options. If we come into add-ons, by default, the Gutenberg option is disabled. All you need to do is check this and then you'll integrate it in. You'll see it like I've just shown you inside the Gutenberg editor. But again, it's another one of those options that gives you more control over how the content inside Gutenberg will work. This is going to be especially useful if you're working with full site editing and you're creating templates using this whole sort of core framework setup is going to give you a more flexible way of working. Now, if like me, you want to use advanced custom fields in your designs, you're kind of limited in what you can do when it comes to working in Gutenberg or full site editing. You're either going to need to code things or just kind of get your hands a little bit dirty. However, this free Metafield block plugin, which I've covered in more detail in the video, link in the description down below. There's a free and a pro version. I've only taken a look at the free version, but the pro, if you want to work with things like repeater regions and all those kinds of good things, the more advanced features, you may want to take a look at the pro. But I want to just show you what you can do with the free version very, very briefly. Now, when you create templates inside Gutenberg and full site editing, you create your templates in a very familiar fashion and you build each of the different sort of pieces up and you pull in data. Now, for example, this is a kind of archive for a custom post type. And as you can see, I've got the featured image, the basic text and so on. And if you want to do something like insert the title of the actual post or page or whatever it is, you can do that very easily. All we need to do is add a new item in, we add to the top. So we'll simply go and forward slash title, click and choose that, and you can see that now pulls the title in. And you'll see over on the right-hand side, we've got all of our core framework options, so we could utilize those inside Jira as well. But we leave that for now. So that's very, very simple and straightforward. But if you want to add sort of custom fields information in, you can't actually do it. This is where the Metafield Blocks plugin comes in. So let's say we want to put in, for example, the price of this particular product. Well, all we need to do is insert a new block, we'll say before, like we did before, we'll put a slash and we'll do meta. And you'll see we've got a block inside you called Metafield block. We'll choose it. Now on the right hand side, we get some more options. Open the field type up, choose ACF from the list. That will show us now the custom fields that we have available to us. So things like free version, price, and so on. So in this example, we want to use price. So I'll type that in. You can see that pulls the price in for me. I can say hide this block if the value is empty. So if there's nothing inserted in there, it doesn't show it. And we'll open up the prefix and the suffix. And we can say, you can use the field label as a prefix if you want to, or we can just say price. If you want to put a suffix in, you can do that. And we can set the display in this example, we want inline. So that now puts it nice and neat in line. And obviously you can style this and do all the things you want. So it's easy to be able to pull in and reference that dynamic data from ACF. Now you can do an awful lot more with this and it works with custom post types and all those kinds of good things. I recommend taking a look at the website. It'll give you more information that I can kind of cover in this very brief video. But it's worth taking a look at. And if you need more functionality, the pro version may be something you're interested in. No affiliate links at all, no kickbacks. I just found this a couple of days ago. I thought it was kind of interesting. But this is another way in which you can expand what you can do we easily include ACF data and make your templates a little bit more useful and functional. Now, the fourth and final one on the list is one that I've covered in the past and one I think that if you are working inside Gutenberg, even if you use things like generate press and generate blocks and so on, you should have this plugin installed because it is such a useful and free plugin and it is a pro version that's free. So that's pretty cool. It's called block visibility. This allows you to, as its name suggests, control the visibility based upon lots of different criteria. And if you're an ACF user, you can reference ACF data to show and hide information, not just native WordPress functions, which is pretty cool. Again, I've created a video on this. I'll link that in the description down below if you want to check it out. But once you have the plugin installed, you'll have a new option inside Gutenberg called visibility. 
you can click and open this up and then we can choose what kind of conditions do we want to check against. There's a lot more you can do with this, but let me just give you the sort of the TLDR basic overview. You can control it based upon your browser and device, cookie, date, time, hide block, location, metadata, a query string that's passed over. So if you're passing this over from an advert or something, you can check the query string and you can show or hide information based upon it. Same thing, re referral source, screen sizes, URL path, user roles and so on. So let's just say a user role. Choose that from the option. You can see, right, now let's just choose what user role we want. We'll say if you are logged out, you can show or hide it. So we'll say if you've got to be logged in, Cool, the block is only visible to logged in users. How simple is that? Want to add another condition? Not a problem. Click the three little dots and add another one in. So you can say, well, you want to use a screen size, for example, and we'll say you have to be logged in and hide it on the tablet and hide it on a mobile. So it'll only be shown on the desktop. Pretty simple. And again, like I say, you can add additional ones in. So you can see we've got integrations with ACF. So we can click and open this up. And now we can choose what field or fields do we want to check against. So show the block if any rule set applies, rules, customer, blah, blah, blah. You kind of get the idea. And rule sets are pretty cool. They're kind of like templates of multiple rules that you can just use any way you want. So if you use this in different templates, different pages, different posts, you can simply use that option and just pull that in and use it wherever you want. It's pretty nifty. But you can see you can choose what fields you want. So there's all our fields, free version, price, and so on, affiliate link, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say you created a button and it would only show up if you had an affiliate link in, inserted into the actual product. Well, you can set that up inside you. Just choose affiliate link from the list, select the condition, say has any value, and then say the field associated with the current post. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but it's very, very easy to show. And then you say hide when, use, when the rules apply and add additional rules. And you can stack all these on top of each other. There's so many different things you can do with this, and it becomes incredibly invaluable. You could even use this to create a simple membership website which checks if they're logged in, what user role they have, if they meet a certain criteria with a custom user role, like subscriber or you know member or whatever you want. Then you can show or hide various different content on your site. Set that up inside your templates. It's all good to go. Very, very straightforward, but incredibly powerful. And the fact it's free just makes it an absolute bonus. So that's four different free plugins you can use inside Gutenberg to make it a much, much more usable platform to work with if you find that it's incredibly limited, which, to be honest, it kind of feels that way. But let me know what you've kind of found useful here. Any of these particular plugins you've used or anything new there, let me have a comment in the comment section down below. And if you want to learn more about great plugins for WordPress, you can check out this playlist next. As always, all applicable links in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.